and there's a lot of similarities, you know, we t in this world where it's like, okay, the attention monster social media things are taking over everyone's attention. Everyone's got their phone now. People don't go to websites anymore. Everything has to be in like one of the apps on your home screen to be in your life. And it turns out that most of the apps on your home screen are controlled by one of these algorithms that's kind of working against you to just grab as much of your time as possible with a few exceptions. One is the podcast app where it's using this RSS format where you subscribe to things and then those things from the people you subscribe to show up. Yeah. And you you have this unmediated connection where you can actually choose how to who you want to spend your mind and life with. And another one is the email app where people can send you emails. And that the those last sort of like bastions of direct connection between people that are making things and people that care about them is the source of a lot of the power of the model, I would say. Um, this thing where you're, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm subscribing to you on Substack, I'm listening to your podcast because I trust you to curate a slice of my intellectual life for me, right? If, if what I read, what I listen to is who I am, you're one of the people I want shaping who I am. That's a big investment. I'm not gonna hand, I don't, we shouldn't be handing that off to what Twitter thinks will make me mad. Yeah, for sure. What do you do like when you when you guys have meetings and you look at like wh how do we make this better? What are our problems? Like what what are the the dilemmas that you guys encounter? So the big thing we've done that's good is we picked a business model that aligns us with the with the people on the platform, right? So it's free to publish once you start charging money, we take 10%. So if you're a writer, when you make more money, that's how Substack makes money. When you're a reader, when you find stuff that's valuable enough that you actually want to choose to pay for it, that's also how Substack makes money. And so the, that sort of like guides us in the things we want to build. It's like, hey, we want to do the things that help writers, which are all the things that help readers, which are also the things that help Substack. And the dilemmas end up being like, okay, how do we do that? And how do we do that in ways that don't, uh, erode the fundamental value that we're creating, right? Because there's lots of there's lots of sort of like short term things that we could do that would seem like really great ideas. Like why don't we just, you know, show you eight recommendations of like cool things to click on that right. the algorithm thinks are good, or why don't we like start to erode the direct connection you have with the writers because you know we could do this more efficient thing. Um, but we know that the the reason the thing works at all is because of the trust and because of the direct connection. And so it's sort of like, how are we? How can we do the thing that brings the power of the network, the power that all of these social media platforms has have harnessed, but do it in a way that puts the people in charge, puts the writers and the readers in charge? There's not really a blueprint for that because that hasn't existed, I don't think, fully until now. Yeah. What do you do? other than an algorithm and, and people are terrified of algorithms because they've seen the effect that it's had on Twitter and YouTube and you know it's it's unfortunate but it does sort of highlight the worst instincts in human nature in terms of like accumulating information you, you go towards things that are outrage oriented yeah and the algorithms, it's a, a bit of a misnomer, too. I'm, I'm a software guy and a, a nerdy by the stuff, and it's sort of like everything's an algorithm. It's like, mm -hmm. are you using an algorithm? Are you using electricity? Like, of course you are. Right. When we say algorithm, we mean, like, something that is showing you stuff in a way to achieve some goal that it has yeah. that might or might not be your goal. And so I think the way to think about it is not, like, do you have an algorithm or not? But it's like, what is that algorithm trying to do, right? If the algorithm is trying to get you to use TikTok for as long as possible every day, that's going to have a different consequence than an algorithm that's trying to introduce you to a writer that you trust enough that you might want to pay for them and care about them. Right. But how do you do that? How do you, how do you find an algorithm that's going to introduce you to someone that you would think would be interesting based on who you already think? is interesting well, these other are the, than creating an echo chamber. These are the exciting these are the exciting problems we get to solve. I'll tell you some of the stuff that's working really well so far is this principle of putting the writers in charge and putting the readers in charge. So with you know we added a recommendations feature and rather than say we're going to figure out who you want to do, we let the writers pick. 
and you don't have to pick anyone. You can say, I'm not going to, you know, if people come to me, I'm not going to send any, anybody anywhere. Or you can say, hey, if you're coming to me, one of the things that I can do for you is put you onto other things that I think are interesting, that I think are worthwhile. And I'm sort of putting my name on that as something that you would check out. Now, that's going to be less efficient if you just look at the numbers of like how much engagement does that get. It's going to be impossible to build something that is as efficient as like the YouTube page that's like, I know what you want better than you do yourself. Yeah. But as a reader, I'm going to choose to spend my time on Substack around that stuff because it creates a real alternative. Because I know that I'm not giving my mind to something that's kind of operating against me. And I know that if I'm seeing something, I'm, there's like a human being that I that made that decision and I know who they are. And I, it's sort of like about that trusted relationship rather than the algorithm, the scary are thing. Are you Canadian? I am. Thank you for noticing. Snuck it out. A boat. <laughs> yeah. I heard it, buddy. You only it's had been, one. It's been like slowly disappearing. <laughs> there's a period of time when I first moved where I my ears accommodated before my voice. And so I sounded like I had a funny accent to myself, which was very unsettling. I, I, I feel you because I had a Boston accent for a while and then I heard myself on television. I was like, ooh. Can you still do the Boston accent? Oh, yeah, if I get drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if I'm drunk with my friends from high school. Yeah, nice. it'll come out because they have it hard. They still live there. Um, you Are you a public company? No, private company. Uh, do you intend on staying that way? It seems like that's the only way you could avoid influence. I'm not sure that's true. Um, I think there, I mean, the thing that success for Substack looks like being an independent company, right? We're trying to bring this thing into the world that's new and we think that it's got a real business model that works. We think we're onto something important and the way that we can best serve that is staying independent and running it our, ourselves and making it into the best thing that it can be. Yeah. Uh, and I think at some point, you know, you can go public and do that. And there's ways to do it that, that are not, uh, don't subject you to the kinds of pressures. How could you do that though? If, if the whole business model is about, I mean, if, if, if it's a public company and people buy stock in the company, you have uh, an obligation to your stockholders to make the maximum amount of money. Yeah. So the, and this is the like, this is actually the maybe at the core of how I think about Substack. Right, one way you could say this is like, well, you know, it, we have a choice. Either we can do the things that make us money, or we can do the things that we think matter. And we're just going to be really good, virtuous people and like ignore all that money and just do the things that matter. And I think a better solution to actually making change is to find a way to set things up so that in order to make money, you want to do the things that matter. Right, and like so we you, set. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. You're offering yourself as this is there's a financially viable solution. Like you, there's obviously a market for this. 